Thiago, first off, congratulations on the win. Um, you, we talked earlier this week, and you did mention that you didn't really dwell on past losses, but you were coming off as kid there. How much of a relief, how good did it, did it feel to get your hand raised and here at home? It feels great, you know. Uh, I've been through this before. I lost more times than I like to, you know, but uh, I, I've been here before, so I knew what I had to do. I just had to fight hard, you know. The, the only way I was going to overcome this situation is with the win, you know, so and that's what I did. How confident were you that you were going to get the nod? I was pretty confident, you know, uh, I, it really depends how you look at it. You know, uh, I, I know he won the first, I definitely won the second, and, and the third I was looking to finish the fight. He got a little takedown there, but he didn't really do much with it, you know. Uh, so if you're looking at being effective, I was a lot more effective throughout the fight than he was. <laughs> you did, I remember you talked about your last fight in Russia and you thought you won that one. He seemed a little frustrated with the result here, do you kind of like can see his side there? Absolutely, absolutely. You know, and every time you're fighting someone else at uh, hometown and you leave to the judge, you know, uh, it, it could always, you know, be uh, the decision that you're not expecting. You know, I'm, I'm happy with it. I'm at peace. You know, uh, it, it's out of my hands. So, you know, I, I'm glad that you know, I got the win. Do you think that if this fight was was in the U.S., there was a chance that he would get the win instead of you? Uh, you know, it depends how you look at it. Could be. You know, uh, if they're looking at, uh, uh, you know, uh, how you scored around. You know, who's spending more time on top? Yeah, absolutely. But if you're looking at being effective, who's looking to finish the fight? You know, definitely I'll get it. You had, you, you had a tough first, first round and you, you kind of was saved by, by the bell. How tough was it to come back to the second round after that flurry in the end of the first? It wasn't tough at all, man. I'm a fighter, you know. Uh, once my back is against the cage, there's only one, one thing to do, you know, it's fight back. And uh, once I got to that point, it's very simple, you know. Uh, I just see a straight line and I look at his jaw and I try to hit him. Speaking of that moment there, I think obviously for every fighter the ideal scenario is to go in there, finish quickly and get that. But there's something about overcoming that type of adversity, right? Is not is there a little bit of a sweet taste that you were able to overcome that and come back? Yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, I'm a fighter, you know, always been, uh, I think because of my body type, you know, I'm not the tallest or the lankiest guy in a, in a, in a welterweight division. So every fight I get in, it's going to be a war, you know, because I'm going to have to eat a few punches to get in there, you know. but. I know what I'm made of, I know what I'm capable of, you know, and I know that I can overcome anything. So it was just uh, a, 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 a thing of biting down my mouthpiece and let's go to war, see who's going to fall first. Earlier this week, uh, we spoke about the matchups and you said that you're not really one to handpick opponents. You signed a contract when it's given to you. But with this win, do you have uh, anyone that you would like to face or maybe even just a timeline of when you want to come back, a specific event, fighting Brazil? Uh, you know, I got two fights left in my contract. I would like to fight those fights in Brazil. You know, uh, I think the, the adrenaline of fighting home, you know, having this energy of the home crowd, it's amazing. You know, uh, I like to fight more veterans, you know, guys that have been not as long as I have been. You don't have many like those anymore, you know. They don't make like me anymore, you know. But uh, fight guys that have been there for a while. And I know Diego Sanchez uh, got a fight coming up, you know, but he's been, you know, as long as I have been in, in the UFC. So uh, veterans that have been, you know, in, in, uh, in the cage for a while. Thiago, recently we had a 10-year challenge uh, trend and 10 years ago you were facing Gerard St. Pierre for the title. If you could reflect on your last 10 years, that this, this run with the UFC, do, are you happy? How do you see yourself now? How do you see yourself in a couple years ago, uh, 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 ahead of us? Are you happy with the results you got? You got? I'm, I'm, I'm blessed. You know, I have no complaints. Uh, of course, everything didn't happen the way I planned or expected, you know, but I've been living my dreams as long as I can remember, you know, I left here, I was a kid, I was 19 years old, you know, I never thought I would live in Florida, you know, be speaking English with you guys right now, you know, coming from where I come from, you know, Fortaleza, it's a very small city, not a small city in Brazil, but, you know, uh, it's a third world country, you know, and be able to get out of here and go to America and, and make a live life for myself through fighting, through fist fighting, you know, uh, through MMA, that wasn't that popular at that time, you know, uh, it's very special. So if I die tomorrow, I hope that doesn't happen, you know, I, I'll die happy. I'm not retiring you, not at all, but you did mention that you have two fights left on your contract. Is there a chance that they might be a less in the UFC or overall, or are you just really taking it by, by fight by fight at this point? Uh, you know, I've been fighting MMA uh, since I was 17, you know, so. That's all I've been doing my whole life. I know that I can do this forever. So I'm already looking at the next step. And you know, what, what, it will be dumb of me not to. 
Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm looking at what I can do, you know, after fighting. I'm already one of the coaches on American Top Team. But uh, as you can see, I still got a lot of fight left in me. So I'm gonna take fight by fight. You know, I'm gonna finish this year, see how the year treats me. And then after that, I reevaluate. You know, I'm 35. 100% by 37, I don't want to be fighting anymore, you know, so uh, we got two years of war. Did, did any part of you uh, thought about maybe tonight fighting your hometown and getting the win here would be the perfect way to, to, to finish your career? No, no, not yet, you know, uh, it, it might, you know, fight week is, is it, it's kind of hard to explain the emotions that go through your head, you know. It's ups and downs. It's a roller coaster, you know. So, yeah, you, you contemplate a little bit, like, all right, if I win, you know, this year and I retired, it would be amazing. And then I slapped myself in the face. I said, what are you doing, dude? Like, you're 35 years old. You know, you still got a lot of fight in you, you know. So, let's finish this contract. Let's see how you do. You know, I look at Cormier, you know. I look at a lot of top guys, you know. They're in the late 30s, you know, and they're in the top of the weight class. So, it's really, you know, up to the fighter. I think there, there's been an old myth of, you know, this is a young men's sport. Yeah, you should get in when you're young, you know, so you can have a long career. But this is the best I've ever been. You know, I'm 35 years old. I feel great. I feel strong, you know, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to get in there again.